In early October 1899, a German naval cruiser arrived at Pornpey to raise a German flag over the island. Spain had just suffered defeat in the Spanish-American War and was forced to abandon its remaining Pacific possessions. As the U.S. took formal possession of Guam, Germany purchased from Spain the Carolines and Marianas. First on Pompeii, then on Yap and Saipan, the Spanish colors were solemnly lowered as troops stood at attention. The German flag was then raised as new German officials watched. The Carolines and Marianas, like the marshals before them, would now be under German rule. The Germans never had more than 350 uh, colonials here at one time in all Micronesia. They really didn't have many, but they, they were closer to the Micronesians than the Spanish were. I think that's a very fair statement to make. They wanted the upper class, upper ranked, higher ranked Micronesians to be their representatives in the villages and throughout Micronesia. Within a few years, Yappies had replaced all the Melanesian policemen the Germans had brought with them. Outer Islanders were also given a place on the police force. Soon there was a squad of 33 policemen on Yap alone. You know, in the German days, they, they talked about them as soldau, meaning soldiers. Uh, that's how they referred to them. And they were very uh, highly selective in, in choosing the people to be on that force. This is Gilifus, one of the first Yapese chosen to serve as a policeman under the Germans. Like many others on the force, Gilifus was from a high-ranking village, the son of a chief. In all the other district centers, the German administration recruited local policemen from among the chiefly families. These men were to be more than just law enforcement officers. They were to be trained in the language and law of the foreign government so that they could be brokers for the government and the vanguard of its modernization program. So besides their military drills and rifle practice, they received instruction in the German language, mathematics, and vocational skills. Micronesian policemen spent several hours a day in the classroom, the closest thing to formal schooling offered by the German colonial government. The district officer for Saipan was Georg Fritz. He had a staff of only two Germans, a clerk, and a medical aide. In one of the first reports from Saipan, one of his staff wrote, The population of Saipan is listed as 1,600, but the population seems to be growing rapidly since there are so many children and Chimoros are constantly arriving from Guam. The population is divided almost equally, with half being Chimoros on the other half Carolines. There are no government buildings on Saipan, for this was not a seat of government before the Spanish-American War.
One of the first projects of the new administration was to build a government administration building. The imposing new structure was surrounded by a wide terrace supported by latte stone pillars, representing the traditional Chamorro culture. But there was another unusual feature of the administrative building. The large clock mounted on the dome. Fritz may have paid his respect to the past in this architectural monument, but he was also suggesting the new order that would prevail under the German government. Punctuality, along with neatness, would be emphasized by the new overlords in Micronesia.